the, uh, the lure of hot electrons is very simple to get high efficiency. Conventional solar cells get only a few to maybe 20% conversion efficiency from sunlight. Whereas if you could get hot electrons out, you might be able to double or even triple that. So theorists are talking up into the 60% or so if you could get hot electrons out. No one has ever done that prior to now. Hot electrons uh, are charges that are being generated by light and usually lost to heat in the conventional cells. So the challenge was to recover those. Uh, the challenge is to uh, do it very quickly because they normally cool down very quickly and disappear. Really to describe a hot electron, sort of the hot electron phenomenon, we really kind of draw a picture of semiconductors. This is a uh, energy diagram, vertical axis is energy, and this is the thickness of the solar cell. And all semiconductors have band gaps separating where the electrons are from where they could go. So light comes in, which is in a spectrum, say red light comes in, shoots an electron up to here, green light comes in, it's higher energy, it can shoot it up higher, blue light, which is even higher energy, that's why you have Blu-ray DVDs, shoots it up to higher energy. All the energy above that conduction band edge is lost energy. So these are all hot. This is hottest, medium, intermediate hot. But they all have to cool down before they get out. What everybody would love to do is get these electrons out before they cool down. And you can see where energy is involved because this is a voltage that you get in your solar cell. And all of these red, green, blue come out at this voltage. If you could get them out at some other voltage, you can imagine doubling or even tripling your voltage, tripling your efficiency. The problem with that is these things cool very fast, picoseconds, that's 10 to the minus 12 seconds or so. And therefore, in conventional solar cells, which are relatively thick, even the so-called thin film ones are hundreds of nanometers thick, those things cool off way before they get to the edge of the sample to get out and be extracted as current. So what we thought is one way to see if indeed you could even ever see a hot electron is to make these things very thin. So we've made solar cells as much as a hundred times thinner than conventional thin film solar cells, just a few nanometers thick. And in doing so, we found we can get some fraction of the hot electrons out before they cool. A useful way to uh, see our challenge is to use the following analogy. Imagine that you want to heat up water in a swimming pool by throwing in a stone, a hot stone. It is impossible because there's too much water here. On the other hand, if you throw the same stone into a cup of water, you can boil it easily. This is analogous to what we have achieved in ultra-thin solar cells.